Hello, welcome to another Great Car Basic training session. Um, this is session 19. We're going to be looking at the software and some magic that the software can do. Okay, um, great. So how do we how do we get here? We got here to page two. I'm going to page two. Great. Uh, we've um, installed the software. Uh, and we worked our way through all the software until we played with memory yesterday, and now we're going to look at the tool chain. Um, let's rip through. I've got a 16F18313, um, connected to a programmer. We will be using that today. It's a little pin. It's got a little 8-pin pin. That's all it's got. So it looks like this down on the lab. Um, I've got exactly the same setup. Okay, I've just got the two LEDs connected today, and... Um, we should have deleted those at lines, but you know they connected through some um, some resistors, which you, you do need. Okay, you do need, and we're going to review that tool chain, and then we're going to use something called CLC to, to leave you a bit of a challenge. Okay. Um. So what I've got is a set of um, set of tools, 26 tools, all listed down here. But what I've actually got, I've actually got them in Excel as well, okay? And I'm gonna publish this out on Excel, on the on the web, so that you can see this. Um, and what's important about this is that I've classified things. So I've got the application titles, oh, I'm so sorry. The application titles, the class, and I've classified things as um, code generators, compilers, core compiler, converters, part of the IDE, programmers, and uh, terminal software, whether it's core, um, what I mean by core is, is that they're pretty standalone, whether it's um, graphical user interface or um, command line, operating system supported, whether you've seen it and whether we maintain it. I've also um, put some commentary in here what they do. Okay, all right. So what we're going to do very quickly is just look at the core stuff to start with, okay? And there, there isn't much in the core stuff, to be quite frank, okay? There is a critical piece that's called the Great Cloud Basic um, Compiler. Um, but however, well, yeah, let's start with the compiler, shall we? Yeah, let's go, let's go with the compiler. What is the compiler is a really good question, okay? All right, so let's go back to here. What is the compiler? It's a, a utility that can be used at the command line only. It will generate valid machine code for about 1,000 chips, okay? Um, it supports microchips, 8-bit um, picks and um, AVR microcontrollers. What does it look like? It looks like this. It takes um, your high-level language. Um, yeah. Let me just change uh, my mouse pointer here. Mouse pointer. Felt it. Oh, don't know how you do this. Yeah, let's just leave the ballpoint. It takes your high-level language here, the source code. It imports the libraries that we've been looking at this week, and it pre-processes it. Passes it along a chain into the assembler, and then links it out. Along the way, it generates some reports for you in terms of HTML and text files. It um, generates an assembly file, which, and then it generates a hex mach um, a machine file that is very specific to the chip. Because over here in the source file, you've told it which chip down here, it then links the two together. What you can do, and I'll show you this tomorrow, is, um, is you, you can actually choose your own at linker at the back end, you can use MPASM, MPLAB, you can take our source code in terms of the assembler and then pass it into those linkers to generate a hex file. You might want to do that. Uh, we don't, I, don't, I don't personally do it, but you can do it. It's the same process. Now, what's important is that we also look um, this week um, here at a thing called Great Graphical Basic. It is a key piece, and it was the second one on the list that I was going to show you. Great Cloud Graphical Basic is a, a user interface that looks like this, and it works great. There is nothing wrong with it at all. And um, to get to it, if you go to your desktop, type in graphical, in, and it will come up with Great Cloud Graphical Basic, and here it is. And I'm opening it up now, and it's on my screen. It looks like this. I'm just going to quickly import a file. And it it's a drag and drop tool. I can... I could delete things. It's deleting it in the source. It's creating source files. Um, I'm going to make it um, flash an LED. I'm going to make it flash LED, um, A1 for 
200 milliseconds. And what is great about Great Graphical Basic, it knows about the chip. Okay, all right. It knows about the chip, so it knows it knows that this particular chip that I'm going to be programming only has these available ports. I can program it with ease. Let me press F9. It will program it. Show you my desktop. It's currently programming it. And down in the lab, I've got an LED that's flashing red, and that's the one I chose. If I go into Great Graf Great Card Graphical Basic, I can change that port to to recompile it it's doing that at the moment and it will change it to the second led now what's important about this great car basic uh, graphical basic is that um it's a very useful tool and it's great for education it does its um it has its own specific uses um it has uh, some limited capabilities in terms of um, gr um graphical LCD, but it has flow control, inputs and outputs, LCD control, timers, variables, and subroutines. It's a great tool, and people should be using it. Let me shut that down, and I'll go back into the PowerPoint. So how does Great Car Basic work? Well, it sits on top of that core compiler. If I go back for you, there's the core compiler. On top of that, we've got Great Car Graphical Basic. It sits on top of it, and you might need to have a programmer. Well, you will need to have a programmer. There's no doubt you need to have a programmer. And you might need PPS tool to make that work. And PPS tool, we've seen this week, and we'll see in a moment, enables you to configure the modules inside of the chips to particular ports. Also in Great Carol Graphical Basic, you may need to use other tools that generate code like CLC, PSM, and they control specific modules inside of the chips. Okay, so inside of the microcontroller, there's a thing called the um, CLC, which I'll peel back in a moment, and other other modules that you need spe specific code generators to help you. You can go read the data sheet, but we've given you the tools that, to do this. Let's look at the Windows IDE. We've been seeing this all week. The Windows IDE is green, and um, it's, I'll zoom in on it. It, it. it looks like this, okay? It, it looks like that, and that's what it looks like. Um, it's pretty simple to use. It's built upon Great Car Graphical Basic, which I've explained before. It needs programmers. We've put on top of that um, the Synrite IDE. It's an editor. It, it, we've limited some of the capabilities of it, but you need to have a set of tools called GS tools. They were also in that list I showed you earlier on. You need to have a thing called the program editor or preferences tool to control the programmers, which I'll go into tomorrow. And it also controls, this, controls a piece of the environment. I'll show you that. Let's go into, into the editor here this is um and if i click on great car basic here i'm going to have to show you this in a different view in my desktop view there we go click on here you'll see edit programmer preferences and inside of here you can now see this dialog box if i can zoom in them and you've got a tab for programmers for tomorrow compiler options and some tool variables for tomorrow but essentially what you can do in here is select four different items. You can have additional comments in the assembler. You can have the um, compilation process be very verbose. You can treat uh, warnings as errors, which is uh, unchecked because you might not want to do that. And then you can prevent recompilation if you haven't changed the code. code. Okay, So if you haven't changed anything, it will just program it for you. So check these, have a play, see what they do. They're quite useful in their own right. Also, in, um, in the inside of here, we've got um, so these tools. Let me just clear that down for us. Okay, there we go. We've also got PPS tool, which, as I've spoken, to, controls um, the peripheral modules inside the chips. We've also got these code generators, CLC, pick info, I've classified as a code generator, PSMC, and some, and so, I'm so sorry, and some, U, and some serial terminal software. So if we just quickly look at that list of software we were looking at earlier on, all these bits, it clearly um, isn't the same list because they're not core. 
So if I turn core off, come into here and I just turn off programmers for a moment, I end up with the list I've just been discussing, which is great car basic through to terminal. So let's have a look, let's have a play for one moment and digress for a few seconds with CLC. So what is CLC? CLC is a user configurable um, it's a user configurable um, peripheral device controller. It's it's like um, it could well it controls internal and external inputs inside of the chip, um, and they it receives an input on one side and an output on another side, and those signals can be um, that those, those signals are maintained even when the chip's asleep. When the chip is asleep, CLC is alive. So why don't we have a look at CLC and see how it operates? Let's go into um, and let's just go into into my desktop. Got an empty um, editor. I'm just going to type in CLC in here, and we're going to have a look at CLC here. I can. It's got a series of logic gates, and these these are built inside the chip. Okay. I'm going to very quickly show you what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to take an input on RA3. And I'm going to have that come onto this this gate this um, this gate here. And when the um, when it's on a rising input, click here. I've clicked over there. Look. When it's on a rising input, I've enabled that. I want to set the output as low. If I press copy and show, I can paste that into my, my code. Let me show you. Specify the chip. Now you can only do this on these newer chips, okay? It doesn't work on the older chips. Now you, you need to use PPS. We've seen PPS before. I'll zoom in on PPS, wherever that is. There's PPS, there's PPS. Is it started up yet? Nope. I need to connect the out the um I need to connect the output of the PPS, the output of this this logic CLC logic controller to an output. I'm going to put it on RA1. Copy that. And your challenge here is to figure out how this piece of code works. I'm going to set the direct the port out. It was A.1 as out. And I'm going to compile that code. Now over to the lab. If this works, I'll be stunned. I'm pressing that button and that LED is coming on. The chip, let me reassure you, is asleep. Let me just go into my code here. I'm going to put the word sleep in here just to make sure you know it's asleep. There's my code. There's very little code in here, okay? But look, if I push that button, and just to prove to you, I'm going to hack this PPS command here, and I'm going to connect the output of that CLC to RA2 as well. I can do that by adding in that one line, recompile it. So the chip is asleep. It's running no code. There is no code down here. Um, I push that button. I have two LEDs. You can't see the second LED. I'll tell you why you can't see the second LED. Because I didn't tell it it was an output. It needs to know it's an output. Two LEDs. CLC is extremely good for generating unique signals. Uh, and controlling peripheral devices without any program logic. Back to PowerPoint. So what we've got is a tool chain that sits around the IDE, okay, and we've got a lot more tools plugged into it. You can use any of the code generators inside of Great Cow Graphical Basic. So what I've just done is connected RA0 as an input to RA1 as an output. There is no program logic in here. It's all done within the CLC module. Okay, what other variants have we got? 
we've got variants for Linux. We've got, oh, oh my, my camera's in the way of the word Mac. Let me just move myself down. And BSD and Mac, and then essentially what you will need to make those work, you'll need to have some programming software and you'll need to have an editor and some scripts. And, and it works. It works absolutely fantastically. There is nothing wrong with it. So, you know, Great Car Basic is an um, overall programming environment. So we've looked at other tools um, today. Um, we've looked at a full list, what's on the uh, in, inside of that uh, spreadsheet. You can ask me any questions on these um, if you want me to go any deeper. But essentially, the, the, the job for today was to discuss the tool chain, uh, look at the software, and I'll call that a wrap on them. Um, Part 19.